Hi, are you still writing code like this in 2019? Well, if you are, then you must watch this video. Hi, my name is Nelson and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Java streams. We all wrote code like this in the past. And to be honest, nowadays, this is pretty much, yeah, just, um, just bad, really because we are moving towards writing functional programming. And when we write code like this, it means that we have to specify every single implementation or every single part or the actual moving parts of the actual code. And this can lead to a lot of errors, bugs, and pretty much, you know, no one does it anymore. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Java streams, which allows you to move away from imperative programming to declarative programming. Without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, let's go ahead and learn about Java streams. If you want to grab the source code for this video, go ahead and check the link down below. I've got a GitHub repository with all the examples that I'm about to cover. So basically, I've got this project right here where I've got uh, a class called person. So if I just shift that for a second. So I've got this class called person that has name, age and gender. And then I also have this enum right here, which is the actual gender. So male or female. And then I've got this class right here, which is the main class. And this is where we're going to write every single uh, piece of code. So let's go ahead and learn first what I mean by imperative approach. So with imperative approach, you define every single step for what you're trying to achieve. So let's say that I have this list of people right here. So let's say that we want to filter down every single female in this list right here. So with imperative approach, what you would do is something like this. So you would start with a list and you would say this is of type person. And then you'd say females equals to and then new array list. And then what you would do, you would do something like this. So you'd say for and then person and then person. And then this would be in people. And then you would have an if condition. So if and then person dot and then get gender dot equals to female you would simply add it to your list. So females dot and then add and then person, right? So finally, let's go ahead and simply print this to the console. So let's go ahead and loop again. So simply go ahead and say females dot and then for each. And right here we can pass a consumer system dot out and then column column print line. Now, if I run this, You can see that we only have female in this list. So this list right here called female, right? But you see that right here, we are defining every single step of what we're trying to achieve. So first we define a list and then we loop through the list and then we perform an if condition right here and then we print. So what Java streams allows us to do and by the way, Java streams um, works really, really well with collections. So it's made for collections. So what streams allows us to do is to simply ask what we want. So instead of us defining, you know, this implementation right here, we can simply tell it what we want from our collection. So to give you an example, so with declarative approach, we have few methods within the stream API. And basically we have filter, sort, or match any uh, non-match, man, mix, group, flat map, so on and so forth. But in this video, I'm going to show you exactly, you know, these ones here. And if you want to learn more about Java streams, go ahead and check out my course on Java streams, which is absolutely free. So what I'm going to do is the exact same thing right here, but using Java streams which is using a declarative approach. So we have a few methods, as I said, so filter, let's go ahead and start with filter. So to use streams and filter, what you have to do is simply say people. So this is the initial collection that we want to start off and then simply say dot and then stream. So when you say stream, this takes you to the abstraction. And from now on, you simply ask what you want from the list. 
So right here we have a method called dot and then filter. And filter takes a predicate and a predicate simply returns true or false. And this is what you want to keep from the original list. So in our case, this will take a person, right? And then we have to perform a condition. So our condition was person dot and then get gender dot and then equals to female, right? So now that we perform the filter operation, now we have to collect the results back into a list. And what this is doing is giving us a brand new list. So to collect to a list, simply say dot and then collect and then say collectors and then to and then list just like that. So you can see that now I can extract this to a variable. And what I'm going to say is females. And in fact, let me go ahead and comment this code and that there. There we go. So now I can grab this same line and then paste it here. And if I run the code, you can see that we have the exact same thing. But right here, you see that we're not, you know, creating a brand new list and then looping through that and then performing the if condition. And then if that says, and then if that satisfies, then we add to the list, which, um, you know, is too much code for something very simple. So this is when declarative approach comes into play. So we can do other things other than filter. So if I go ahead and pretty much just comment that line and we can also sort this list right here. So the initial list right here. So people. So let's say that we want to sort the list or oh, actually first, let me go ahead and simply uh, loop through uh, people. So if I uncomment that and then run this, you can see that we have both male and female, but the actual data is not sorted. So you can see that first we have um, James Bond, age 20, 33, uh, which is Alina, uh, 57, 14, 99, 7, and, and then the 120. But let's say that we want to sort this list by the actual age. So to do that, what we can do, we can simply say people dot and then stream. So remember, every time that you want to use declarative approach and enter the abstraction mode, where you pretty much just ask what you want, you simply have to say dot stream on a collection. And then right here, simply say dot and then sort. And sort takes a comparator. So the comparator goes like this. Simply say comparator dot comparing. And then right here, we can pass the actual field that we want to compare. So in my case, I want to compare age. So I'm going to say get and then age. Just like that. Now I need to collect this to a list again. So collect to list. And then if I extract this and simply say sorted and then pretty much just say sorted right here. And if I run this, you can see that now our data is sorted by the actual age. So you can see 7, 14, 20, 33, 57, 99 and 120. So if you want to reverse, so the actual order, simply go ahead and say dot and then reverse. So if I run again, you can see that now it's reversed. So 120, 99, 57, 33, 20, 14, and then seven. And you could also change the comparator. So you could say dot and then, then comparing. So let's say that we want to compare uh, females. So females or actually gender, my bad. And if I run this and right here, you see that we first get female and then the next one is uh, male, but then we have two females. So 57, 33, and then a male. And then the, the last one, which is the, the, the youngest person in this list is a female. So seven. So this is awesome. So we could also ask questions about our collection. So this is when all match, any match and none match come into play. So let's say that we want to find out whether every single one in this list has an age bigger than five, right? So to do that, we can say people dot and then stream. And if you guess and then all match, and this takes a predicate 
and right here we have to return a boolean for the condition that we are after so what we want is person dot and then get and then age bigger than five right so if i extract this to a variable or match and then south and then all match and if i run this you can see that we get true. So everybody in this list has an age bigger than five. So if I was about to change this to, let's say eight, and then run this, you can see that it's false because, so Anna Cook, she's seven. She's not bigger than eight. And pretty much not everyone satisfies the condition that I've just asked. So you can also check any match. So any match pretty much just check for at least one. So if I comment this, we could pr pretty much just perform the same operation right here, paste that, and this will be any match. And then right here, instead of all match, simply say any match. And then pretty much we have at least one person which is bigger than eight. Oh, actually more people, but basically it just finds one and then returns true. If I run that, you can see that's true. But if I say, do we have any match which is bigger than 121, run this, this will return false because Zelda, she's 120. And we haven't got someone which has an age bigger than 121. So also we could have the reverse, non-match. So if I comment that out, and then simply say people dot and then stream dot and then non match and this takes a person so now we can ask a question so let's say that we want to find out if there isn't anyone with the name of let's say antonio so let's simply say person dot and then get and then name dot and then equals and then antonio and then extract that to a variable and then non match if i south non match run this you can see that it is true so there isn't anyone in this list with the name of antonio but let's go ahead and change james bond to antonio run this you can see that this now returns false so as you see the powerful of streams is just you know crazy so let me go ahead and show you max and mean. So basically we can ask information about the max number or the max value within a collection. So let's go ahead and find the person that has the maximum age. So for that people dot and then stream and then dot max. And then inside it takes a comparator. So comparator comparing and you saw that before and then get age. And then if I extract this to a variable and this returns a an optional, by the way. Um, and the reason why is because it might not, you know, find the max value within this collection. Right. So if I pretty much just say max and right here or actually just let me remove that. So what I'm going to do is that. And then right there dot and then if present and then person and simply salt and then person. And we can pretty much just replace this with method reference. And there we go. If I run this, you can see that Zelda, she's the oldest person in this list. So let's do the same for men. So I'm gonna grab that and then paste that in. And what I'm gonna do is comment that put a semicolon there and then right here instead of max simply say min run that and now you can see that Anna Cook she's the youngest person in our collection so this is awesome so we could also group information so this is where you want to group information based on a field that you have so let's say that we want to group this information based on gender right so for that we would expect a map with a gender and then a list of each gender and then a list for the person within each gender so to do that let's go ahead and simply say people dot and then stream and then dot and then collect 
And now we're not collecting to a list because we want to map with the genders and then each person within that gender. So now we can use collectors dot and then grouping by. So grouping by takes the actual field that we want to group by. And what we want to group by is the actual gender. So if I then extract this to a variable, you can see that now. So um, group by and then gender. So you can see that now this is a map of type gender and then a list of people. So let's go ahead and loop through this group gender. So group by gender and then dot and then for each. And this takes the gender and then people. So right here. Um, you could rename this to peep to something else, but for now, let's go ahead and simply say south and then gender. And now what we're going to do is simply say people one dot and then for each and then system dot out and then column colon print line. So if I now run this, you can see that. And in fact, if I add us another south there and then run this, you can see that right here we have female, right? So this is what we grouped and then everyone within female and then male and then everyone within male. So as you see, streams is just so, so powerful. And just imagine if we had to do all of this using imperative approach, right? It would have been like lots of lines of code and pretty much is just too much, right? So another thing that we can do is you see that I've just used a single method within stream. So what we can do is if I pretty much just comment this. So the cool thing about streams is that we can chain these, right? So let me give you a quick example. So let's say that we want to find out every single female and then grab the oldest female and then pretty much just return the first name. So to do that, we would do something like this. So you'd say people dot and then stream. And now let's go ahead and say simply filter. So we want to filter females. So person dot and then get and then gender dot equals to female. Then what we want to do, we want to find the oldest female. So simply say max and then comparator comparing and then get and then age. Now we could also use the map. So let's go ahead and say map. And now we want to grab the actual name and then end out with semicolon. So now you can see that we have an optional. So this returns an optional. So oldest and then female. There we go. Now I can say oldest female age dot if present and then name and then system dot out dot printer len and then name. And basically I can use method reference right here as well. So now if I run this and now you can see that Zelda Brown is the oldest female in this list. So this is just insane, right? So as you can see, you can pretty much just chain these and ask questions on your list instead of implementing every single step along the way. All oh, right, so as you saw the benefits of using Java Streams, it's insane. So the next step for you is to take out my course on Java Streams, where I cover everything that we covered in this video, plus more. Go ahead and enroll to my course where I'm waiting for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to get more videos like this. And also make sure to follow me on my Instagram where the community is growing. This is all for now. Join me in the next one. See ya.